Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shy Three Sixty Three alongside Flaxar. Flaxar and Slaris. That's me. We have at least five more games to go. Flex off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Flex four more games to go. This is game two of the bronze match, which, for those of you, for a reminder, is between Scotty Yuckstoth and Flipstip Lowry. And thankfully, I have two co-commentators because evidently, I am drunk. I have not had a drop of anything other than water, but I'm apparently drunk. That's the only explanation. That's the problem. If you only drink water, you don't get any sugar or any energy in your brain. Oh, no, I have some, I have you some become eggs lightheaded. Earlier. I have some eggs earlier, but oh crap! You know what? You're right. I probably should have gotten something to eat during that break rather than discussing philosophy. <laughs> Damn. Instead, we talk about. Cartesian dualism and fighting games. <laughs> yeah. Well. Anyway, game on. So. Okay. Hovercrafts and vehicles against tanks and vehicles. Yep, that's the game. Lowry going for tanks. So apparently has gotten off the hovercraft kick. I wasn't sure about that, but it was. Uh, his previous addiction was tanks and. The oh, his tanks is first and only love. First and worst. I like tanks I too. I mean, granted. I, last time I used them, I got completely bodied by an air start, but still, I like uh, them. Um, they, they were like last last um, tournament. They were everyone was playing hovercraft. Yeah, that's what um, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. One v one they're tournament they're was hovercraft small. everywhere. It was louder was playing hovercraft every game. Just it was just going. Oh yeah, right. Sorry, we're supposed to show you guys the map. <laughs> Audio games, everybody. It's a brand new thing. <laughs> since no one seems to get the ACTV references that I throw into my cast, so I don't even know why I bother. Except for that blowed you a really good one last time. Mind you, that's a really obscure but, uh, one. I can think of it. We have a Kodachi coming in now, which is um, over the north. Ooh, a nice. pretty strong early raider. Oh, it's that's why I'm saying. But it's run into some scorches. Heavy tank's quite good. It's just you have to be really careful of the Kodachis. And then, of course, the Panthers will come in, and that will just rip apart everything else. I mean, rip apart the Scorchers, no problem. And one of the Scorchers is about to burn to death. Nope, no, not quite. 64 health, still alive. Kodachi, however, can't has no open spots. They can't really get the northwest metal strategy because the commander's there, and the southeast one is well defended by the defender. And the tank factory is specifically designed so that um, the units in it, because they're more expensive, you can spend more time microing them, which means that they actually take more micro. There's more tricks you can pull off with them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's one thing for well, those of you who have the physics uh, of zero K allow for tricks with every unit. Yeah. Okay. Here's the. But there's, 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 it's, it's. You can get more reward out of correctly microing. Like you can do, uh, when you were treating with a Kodachi, you can actually um do set target at the ground, which will fire, and leave behind a, a trail of ah, flame, nice. and the, which the enemy will, will run through. Which is like, it's just like, it's, it's crazy stuff. Like, using set target to attack ground is a very rare thing to, that you can actually oh, get benefit. Oh, there's from. a right cannon commander. That's nice. Oh yeah, that's right. Flipstep has right cannon radar. Ooh. Mobile Raider? I haven't seen that at a high level ever. Uh, I, I actually prefer... i actually really a f big fan of a Mobile Raider because it only costs about as much as the static one and <laughs> I forget to build Raider all the time so having oh, it on my yeah. commander on the on the first morph is, is actually pretty solid. Yeah, getting Raider into the right spot of the build order right at the start, I mean, obviously it's not much of a build order but I mean that, that opening build when you're trying to get that little bit of energy it's always kind of tricky to where to fit the radar every in. Every bit of metal counts. Yeah. It's like that. It's like once you get ten energy, you're good. But before then, it's you gotta be really careful. I've I've noticed that too. It's just getting that. Mm. Like, should I put metal in? Sorry, should I put radar in between metal extractor? Should I put it like do metal extractor, metal extractor, power, power, metal extractor, radar? Like uh, just when the vehicle player here is uh, losing quite a bit. Oh yeah, those all yeah. those darts going down right in front of there while I was distracted talking about my own experiences. Bad timing. Time. Sorry about that. But we do have a lot of daggers that are also in a really good spot to be just burned to death. And so they will be, for the most part. Two of them going down for free. Or, no, not quite free. One of the scorchers goes down. Okay. Scorcher um, Kodachi is actually a really good combination against... Um, against hovercraft, yeah. Against daggers, which... which uh, scorchers sometimes have trouble with daggers because they can do a lot of... Alpha. It's also yeah, worth noting that... Uh, scale, with, scale against the opponent's size. If the opponent's size gets bigger, they, they get more powerful. But heavy tanks aren't going to get that big. So... Doesn't really help. Yeah. Now, Mace is on the yeah. other hand. Oh boy. That would be a different story. Anyway, you were saying? Yeah, Mace is an excellent ride. It's nice to see how Flipstip has multiple groups of raiders running around. 
Yeah, well, it's it really keeps track of every uh, yes. route on the map. That <coughs> is that is something that we don't see enough in Zero K, and I'm glad to see it here. Thank you for pointing that out. But yeah, that is. That's kind of tricky to do. Yeah, that also or? shows how Laurie can. Uh, I mean, flips the can kind of keep track of more things than other players can. Mm. Yeah, I, I have a terrible habit of just doing Control z on all my Raiders and putting them in a big group. And there's a good reason to do that because th it's stronger. actually really it's actually really strong to have a net local superiority. Of course. Uh, because, you know, Lancaster Square Law and what have you means that you can get a lot more yeah, out yeah. of that. Although, admittedly, most but, of the interactions um, in this game operate more in the linear logic of the range limitations. But, yeah, I kind of know what you mean. Yeah. Well, it's not range limitations, well, but good. due to the fact that units can't shoot through each other. So, other mm -hmm. than, like, daggers work on the square law, and the various artillery pieces work in the square Slashers. law, and rogues work on the square law. Rogues work very well in the square law. I see Slashers, oh, yeah. uh, did you see this? The commander took all the hits from the defenders, then he sent it in the uh, Slashers. I did not see that, but unfortunately, he, but that it, is very he's, clever. Is the enfilade on the, um, the attack from the side from the, from the Scorchers? And the, um, from the yeah, that's a very good flank here from uh, Laurie. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of too opportunistic to uh, use your slashes like that. Look yeah. at the hit points on the, that Kadachi and that um, Panther as they retreat, though. On all of these units, they are so yeah, low. Good micro. Yeah, that's micro. That, that is how you there. play tank. But it does expose him to an attack now if um, if Yogsadot <coughs> decided to. If Yogsadot had any resources, oh, don't clump with. up your units, Flip, if you're uh, oh, oh, what, fighting daggers. Ah, Flip is trying to intercept and will be successful if. Oh, well, okay, Lowry needs to retreat. That's the thing. Lowry is being a bit too risky here. I think Lauder's relying on auto repair or on scaring away Yogstas. No, units. no, no. Those units have way too few hit points to. Uh, well, make yeah, this attack. Get them as long as then. There. Ah, no. One of the Panthers go down. One of the Panthers go down. That was that could have been avoided. That could have been avoided. First, yeah, the way you want to play is, I would have liked more lose, levelers lose first. But levelers. Yeah, their stats are actually not that strong in comparison. It's it's um, it's the fact that they can survive a one versus one encounter and then retreat. And repair, yeah, which makes them that, really steamroll out of control. And unfortunately, Lowry did just lose a Kodachi and a Panther for not quite free, but that was basically a trade for the earlier slashers that didn't have to be. And so you can see the transition of the Raider game now that we've got Halberds and a Mace from Skazi, and as well as the slashers from Yogg. Mm -hmm. And we've got Ravages coming in from Flipstep and, and Levelers from Flipstep too. And a Leveler. Mm. Yeah, Lowry's the only one still in the uh, Raider phase, work. actually. Although, admittedly... With, with the heavy oh, Raiders, mind, no, Reaper's he coming might in. stay for a nope, while. Reaper's coming in, yeah, so but he's starting we are him. out of the Raider phase pretty convincingly. Although, I think... He's a Stinger going up, which will stop these uh, Slashers cold. Oh, yeah. Scorchers is going to try... As long as he can Oh, no, Scorch is not going to go for it. Yeah. The only thing is, Scorchers might try no, to go for it during fire delay, but no, there's too many other defenses. His Halberds, which are really good against defenders. They're actually really bad against um, Scorchers, which is why you don't see as many Halberds as you do Ravages and such. Yeah, makes sense. I was just thinking that... There's still this maze here. I guess enough defenses, though. The Halberds still in... you got to be careful with them. As I was mentioned before, the Slash... Is he not level? ...stripping apart these, these tank raiders. Yeah, well... Kalisto of Loro, his commander, uh, has Lazarus Device? Has a Lazarus Device on level 2. Oh, from um, my, Oh, wait. Which might uh, work out pretty well for him in the long run here. Oh yeah, that's true. It's not bad on tanks, I suppose. Yeah, that's really good on tanks. Although I don't know what the top, the costs are the big thing, because like you have to supply the remaining sixty percent of the metal, right? You don't actually. You just need to supply energy. Really? And build power. Oh. Yep. I thought you had to supply metal if there were damage or the something. They push through with uh, scorches in the north now. If the if the wreck is partially reclaimed, you need to refill it with metal. Oh, but it's okay. So you refill it to the forty percent of the reclaim, and then after that, you just add energy to get the remainder of the one hundred percent of the health or cost or whatever. It scorches in the north, the yeah, top well, left, and uh, darts in the lower right. Yep, yeah, mass. Yeah, the scorches nice are, are taking out these. Except for the fact that it didn't work. It's all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, they're actually, doing no, it did work. Sorry, the northwest worked fine. Yeah, it took out it just, quite a bit. It got stopped, Five but still actually did some decent damage, and is... Whoa, getting rid of a panther, too, for not much cost, really. Getting rid of a few solar... Meanwhile, the scorches the aren't free, they're pretty expensive. Yeah, meanwhile, Ravageable the being beaten. We, we have a Ravageable being, back, being beaten back by the commander and the maces, because the, the, Ravage, the Ravages can actually be kited a bit by the maces, because they have a range advantage on them. Yeah, although it's really tricky to pull that off, but I'm sure Skazi can. I, is the Reaper in the north being taken out by scorches? Ah, that was... Actually, that's um, fine. It'll live. Moving into range that's of a fine. stinger is not a good idea. Yep. 
and caretakers the stingers are very expensive, yeah. way too expensive to lose the turrets. Usually in this phase of the game you don't really assault with them, you keep them back a bit and only send them after the main attack. He got greedy when he saw the Raper because Scorchers can be incredibly strong against Raiders. Nice if you dodge the shots. Sorry. Don't worry about it, keep going. Here's the uh, slashes through the middle coming down to take down all his defenders. And uh, unfortunately they're focusing the Welder which has a lot of hit points. Welders are very beefy. But uh, as long as the, he, they can kill the defenders before the reload cycle of the defender starts... No, nah, it... Yeah, okay, they're keeping oh, the okay. commander, so it's fine. He, he gets rid of it. Yeah, the commander has auto repair, so we can just keep doing that. Walk into yeah. a bunch of defenders, take take all the defender shots, then march the slashes in. And that's what it's for. And it's doing a wonderful that's job too, except the stinger might be a bit of a problem. the air now. The stinger yeah, and the reapers are going to be a huge problem I mean, if you can the slashes. More so. But he's actually changed the dominatrix. He switched into dominatrix to try and beat these reapers, oh. which I have not seen before. Nice, that is cool to see. It's combat vehicle. Yeah, too bad it's, they're it's already. Very there is halberds? an uh, along the south. Halberds coming in. Uh, I've actually do not do not see much halberd play in um, flat map hovercraft, but um, using them to break into a base like this. I is think he clever. might spot the aircraft factory now. Oh yeah, yeah there it is. Will. And that he, that he's taking out caretakers. This is a great attack. That will. Oh wow! Getting rid of a caretaker on top of that, and oh, I almost got rid of the lotus. Two caretakers. Oh yeah, right, the first one here. Part two? Yep, there were two there. Oh, I guess the record doesn't get... Yeah, but still. Actually, even better. Wow. Okay, so Flipstip. Although Flipstip right now is still using all the metal, so it's not the biggest deal at this point. I mean, it's a bit of a pain, but it's not going to be slowing them down any. No, not really. It was a good attack, but it could have been much better. It could have been much worse for Flipstip, that's for sure. Although I think mm. Flipstip... Flipstip still got a really strong position, though. I mean, the thing is... Blizzard and Lowry have an army advantage, and the economy is really gets even. 10 or 11, yeah. I mean, look at this. You can see Lowry this in Palin. Five Reapers, sorry, four Reapers, fifth in production. The north side is basically just a matter of when Lowry decides to smash through with Reapers. I mean, the Ravagers will be a bit of a pain, but otherwise... And Kodashi is well This Impaler support. is making it impossible. They're, they're making lots of stingers in the middle of the map, while there's an Impaler which is making it impossible for Yogg and Skazi to get up any defenses. They now have a single LLT. Defending the entire south side. Yeah, and that LLT is, well, obviously going to be inadequate. I mean, it's the entire. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah, it looks like. It's gone. It's Lowry aren't, oh, yeah, now it's gone. It looks like Flips and Lowry aren't taking the most advantage of this, though. They're worried more about the Dami, which is not a surprise there, but also worried about the Ravagers, which. Well. Is the Bombers, though. The bombers coming in, and the some Raiders with coming on top of that, and Ravagers as well. Uh, the Dominatrix is incredibly vulnerable to, um, to Bombers. That's true, That's but what, also... Bombers are really awful. Bombers did not manage to hit uh, it at all. Small rate coming from the south again. And just a couple check. Well, okay, it looks like... Yogg and Lowry do know where the Dominatrix should be, so know where to target it, but... It doesn't seem to be going for it with that much dedication. In fact, yeah, all the Bombers are targeting incoming Raiders, which kind of makes sense, but the Scorchers were there to deal with it. The Dommies aren't really a priority, honestly. From the looks of it. Yeah, he stopped making them. He's made oh, three. They didn't go. really work out. Yeah, the Reapers. Made They're very risky. Out. If they work, they work well. But if they don't, they just they do nothing. Four hundred metal each that goes down, down the drain. Yeah, and just, I would meant more because the bombers weren't going for them. But it doesn't matter because the bombers didn't have to. The Reapers could took care of them. More scorches raiding through the south, and the big Ravager ball coming up next to take out the commander. By the look of it. Yep. But there's a lot of maces here. Well, even with... Oh, yeah, with that, that's going to be a problem. Although, given that those misses are kind of distracted by the Ravagers, levelers coming in from behind, these should be able to... Oh, the level... No, never mind. The Halberds stopped attacking. Oh, not for... The Halberds are doing really well. They are doing okay. But the Maces are doing well. <laughs> yeah, the Halberds are yeah, the, taking the, the, the Halberd combo. Although... The Halberds are actually physically blocking the Ravagers from getting close to the Maces, like they're actually standing in the way. Oh, right. I guess that's what... Yeah, well, it makes sense. Just they're attacking as well, and... Yeah. But even then, that's actually working out. There's enough of them that does seem to be working okay. But the leveler still managing to get in the pressure. Although, yeah, that block shot, that shot blocking is nice. And now with the wreckage able to block the shots on top of that, it should be fairly mm. easy to get around here. The ultimatum time. Oh. Oh. What? Ult yeah. Against the Reapers. The Yogg's building ultimatum yeah, no, on the north east side of the map. 
And that is about, what's it saying, 47 seconds away from being done. While well, at the same time, the Reaper's coming in and Flipstiff getting pushed back. So those Halvers did do their job. You guys call it Scuzzy's better, got a huge reclaim in injection now from that little skirmish. And he's, he's actually accessing it over to um, yogg Sadath, who is pet spending it on the ultimatum. So this is their chance to, if they can use this well, to get an advantage back. Swing there back. goes yep. the commander. Although, yogg you know, losing their commander isn't ideal. Still can yeah. work. Although if that is the case, wait, why is the wind counter not? Okay, so what was the winner last game was flip was Skazi and Yogstaff, right? On IC run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they poured. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I forget. <laughs> Who is using the the ribbon? That was Skazi. Oh, sorry, that was Yogstaff. Skazi was, was using. That's 15 minutes ago. I can't even remember. <laughs> Hey, how can I remember? I should be sleep deprived. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, Skaz and Yogg's Death will probably be losing this from the looks of it going on to game three, which will be on their choice of map. They're, make, they're making a push now, which is working out all right. Well, the, the ultimatum's up. Yeah, which is gonna okay, yeah, the ultimatum is coming in here, and the daggers are doing a decent job cutting in here. The halberds, where though? are the halberds? Because those have been the real story of the game so far. Although Skaz's commander is actually, wow, Riven. doing fine. Doing quite well. The Riven is bombing. Yeah, it takes out yeah, the gold it took out two nano towers. Wait, where? Oh, I see. Yeah, there. Oh, that's after the ultimatum comes in and starts just degunning the hell out of everything. Especially the raiders. <laughs> the <laughs> ultimatum is best against Did raiders. The <laughs> <laughs> At yeah, least it like, gives yeah. a nice explosion. Yeah. Did you guys take out the distortion effect in ultimatum? Uh, when it hits the ground. The, the shot. Something? The shot distortion effect. Yeah, um, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. Weird. Anyway, that aside, the Reapers still are dealing quite heavy damage, and yeah, the Kodachi is able to get around the back, raid that out. Honestly, Scott and Yogg's stuff. Don't see what good game. Twist they have. They really showed how they knew how to play uh, these type of maps. Mm -hmm. Loud and yeah, it was a good match by um, everyone, I think. Uh, sort of back and forth, but. It Up until the point where uh, Dominatrix is got built. Yeah, once yeah, that happened, it work was out. pretty much That over. was 1200 metal that was wasted, then the counter tick. Yeah, lost them the game, basically. I, I think it was the Merle basically took out all the defenses, made it impossible to defend. And the Stinger gave, made a safe zone for Laurie's tanks, where he could retreat and repair them to his commander, where the slashes were stopped completely cold. Whereas, usually, a slasher push can just mow through raiders, defenses, and the only thing that stop it is an equal army size. Or a stinger. And a stinger is what was there, so that did definitely stinger do the trick. And the stinger and the, and the impaler were well, the stinger, it MVP, the stinger, because the thing is, the stinger on its own, okay, let make it fire, then rush in with raiders while it's reloading, and they can only fire on one at a time once it's surrounded. The problem was stinger combined with lotus combined with defender, Nothing could really get close enough and live long enough to actually kill the stinger off and kill everything else off without getting killed by all the defenses, unless it was hitting from afar and there was no artillery being built other than the impaler. That was it. Just gives the it. perfect it gives the perfect zone for the um uh, rivers to retreat to with the commander there to repair them. Yeah, that sort of level of firepower, and you can't you can't outrange them, you can't harass them, and if you dive in, you take a lot of damage. Yes, yeah, so that was definitely a good move on that part. Oh, thank you. Bit square before I forget. It's one to one. We are on to game three of the bronze match. Update that's game three of the bronze match. It is game three of the bronze match. In case you didn't notice, Ahira, uh, spectate, please. We'll, we'll have I game three once the map is decided. And until then, I guess more idle chat. Or you guys can idly chat while I get some meat. I don't know which one's better for you guys. Comment catcher redux for the next one. That's your call. It, is that what they've decided? No, Skazi won't take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Google points out in the chat quite correctly that um, the air was important there. Transitioning out. In, uh, in correctly into air and what have you, while the the right hand side didn't transition into air or anything heavy. They tr they used um, halberd 
mace, which I'm really, actually, really glad to see halberds, and I'm sad to see that they didn't have more effect because they're sort of like ravages with a ra it, artillery immune ravages, which can even better against defenses. Actually, I should check so it's a bit of a shame that they're not that strong. I guess I always kind of have this impression of halberds as being fairly weak, just because. I mean, they were strong when armored, but once they get unarmored, you can kill them pretty easily with pretty much anything. Their health is something you have to be very careful about, so it's... I mean, I suppose if you do... If you were to have a buffer zone of halberds in front that are on hold fire, and then halberds in the back that are actually setting targets, that might work, I guess, but even then, I don't know. Now you get a game of uh, who can uh, set its targets uh, the quickest. Well, the halberd is um, 240 cost. For one two fifty, one thousand two hundred fifty health. Oh, that's actually pretty good. And the ravager, I mean, that's that's you know, yeah, that's on two par. metal per hit point. Uh, I mean, that, sorry, zero point two metal per hit yeah, point. Yeah, that is on par. Actually, no, the ravager is a bit tougher, but that's still on par yeah, with the level. Yeah, it's 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 it's. I mean, the the ravager is uh, one uh, eighteen fifty. Maybe it's just so the, it has like how powerful is the shot? Six hundred more hit points. The halberd shot. It's it's really the halberd's projectile, which is very slow. We sped it up a little bit, so it has a, a little bit more time, hope. Yeah, but I mean the but actual the ravager itself is the damage of it. The damage of it is, excuse me. Yeah, the damage of it is um, it's just a bit weaker than the ravager, but it's faster and it has the closing effect. So I mean, and the ravager is really strong. So it's a shame the halberd isn't used more. I think it. It might do with a buff. Um, I would buff it actually very slightly. Um, I think, if not for the fact that the factory is so dominant. Anyway. I, don't know. I think the buff and that the, the biggest buff that Halberd could use would be a slightly more impactful attack, assuming that its projectile is fairly damaging. Because right now the projectile looks quite weak. Yeah, the, the truth is, it actually has more damage per second than the Ravager. Yes, yeah, so that's the thing. Is like, it looks it like it's just this smack and it just does nothing. It's just, like water smacking into them. Because it's a blue bubbly thing. It's a blue yeah. bubbly thing that I actually, it, has, it has all these sparks coming off it and stuff. Well, I think if the impact yeah, had an it, explosion that went back out, like it hit and then kind of burst out or something like that, or an exp I don't know, did something on impact. Yeah, it has slightly less range, which is actually, you want less range if you have the armor mechanic, because, you know, obviously that makes sense to have less range, so, because you can shrug off damage at range and then get close. Mm. Um... But I mean, it has more DPS, and it's 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 like three point two, which is like that's raider speed. Like the Ravager is almost raider speed, basically at almost three. But at three point two, the, the Halberd travels at raider speed. The problem really with the um uh, with the Halberd is that it is so vulnerable to scorches. In other matchups, it's not too bad. Like versus some um, tank, or um, to some degree versus other. Um, versus, say, hovercraft. If the enemy's making scalpels, mm -hmm. it can be okay. Oh yeah, that's a great counter. Mace, if the enemy's making scalpels. It's 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 not as good as you think. Actually, well, okay, most, it's a good most counter. Hover games, counter I've seen, with I've seen it's mostly scalpel versus scalpel. With support, it's a good counter because then you're yeah, it's good at wasting shots. Exactly, and then when they're on reload time, you run in with maces or with daggers and just rip them apart, and you're not losing your units in the process because the halberds just take the shots and tank it, and everything else just goes. Yeah, but the halberds. Yeah, it's it's not a bad unit. I mean, you'd think it wouldn't be used as a glorified clogger, which is almost a glorified dirtbag. That is, which is almost how it's used. I mean, you wouldn't. It seems sort of a bit of a shame. I think it probably could do with it a little bit more hit points. But um, the problem is the scorcher. The scorcher can just if it, if it stays closed, the scorcher can just ram it and just do huge amounts of DPS to it, which basically make its armor irrelevant. And if, if the halberd opens to fire, fire back, the projectile it's dead. is... It's dead. It's dead before it shoots. It's slow enough. It's slow enough that... Um, it's slow enough that it's even slower than the Ravager, the projectile. So it's slow enough that you can't... The, the Scorcher can just sort of dodge around it. Well, something so, pointing yeah. in the chat as they're listening to us that they don't get the halberd because they think... Well, the comment was it's slow as a slow-moving shot, though, Emilia, you're pointing out that it is raider speed. But, yeah. It's... It, the, the movement, yeah, it's rate of speed. I mean, to say that it's slow, this is a weird perception, because the bandit moves at 3 speed. The halberd moves, moves at 3.2. It's faster than bandits. Which, when you think that the halberd 
like the counter to the halberd is to chase it around with raiders and shoot it while it's closed because raiders have a lot of DPS and dodge shots if it, it's shots if it opens. The halberd can actually outrun bandits and get in there, walk through defenses and kill economy. Which so sucks because you know in that matchup, entirely depend on, on retreat micro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you think the halberd would, would be at three point two? This perception that it's slow, slow moving is it's crazy. <laughs> Well, I, I, I mean, don't know. I, I, think it's it three. I think it's just a matter of something in the way the art set up, or especially something in the way the projectile set up on impact. I, I think it's just a general. It's 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 not so much perception of it being weak as it just not having quite the right stats. Its projectile is just a little bit too slow, slower than Ravager. Its open hit point is just a little bit. Um, is is it, it's actually quite significantly worse than Ravager, and the, the armor bonus doesn't help when it's in combat. Yeah. So it's more of a specialist unit, which is really great for taking out defenses. But it's bad enough at everything else, and the Ravager is good enough at taking out defenses that the Ravager is kind of better. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's slightly faster than Ravager, but the Ravager is fast enough. I mean, uh, I, I feel like a Raider Speed Assault, even if it's specialized, I, I think what the, the factory kind of needs um, a anti unit specialized uh, fast unit. I mean, the problem is that the dagger is already so strong, and one thing I hate about it is, is you have dagger monoculture. Yeah. I, I, and which and we've we, well, we've yeah. gone a, way, a long way to fixing that. Which actually I've not really I noticed kind of, beyond the five minute mark. And after that point, you definitely see maces, and then you see scalpels to counter the maces, and then you see halberds to counter the scalpels, and you see penetrators eventually because people just get sick of getting killed by things and want to just destroy everything from afar. Yeah, it's actually penetrators are actually really good against scalpels because they oh yeah, well, that's what I mean. They don't like but, um, By stuff, I mean maybe. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like um, the dagger could afford to be. I don't know. It's just like the the balance is so fine tuned at this point that if I was sort of starting from scratch and, the, and didn't have this such fine tuned balance, I would add a anti unit, um, like something that travels about the fastest as fast as the halberd, but is like the archer, where it has maybe not impulse, but something which is only specifically good against units. Then you would use a dagger as a scout, more like a dart, um, with, with a bit more versatility, sure. But you transition out of it fairly quickly into halberd, which would rip apart defenses, and this unit, because the mace is, mace is your main riot, but first of all, it has no AoE, and secondly, it's so high weight that it takes a long time to get to mace, and you can actually feel them quite early because they're so versatile and strong, but uh, it would be nice to have an early anti-unit raided, raided weight or raider speed unit that um, is actually useless against defenses, so you can use it with the Halberd, mostly to protect the Halberd from enemy Raider forces. And I think that would make the Halberd really shine. Yeah. But um, Maybe it's something that, yeah, that, that a would... bouncing projectile, I don't know. Like, bouncing projectile? Well, because if it would only hit defenses once. I mean, okay, a string of defenses would hit more than once, but it would only hit a defense once, but if it was a group of Raiders, it would sort of bounce between them, damaging all of them. Well, that's, that's basically... You mean you mean like chain lightning sort of effect? Yeah. Or, yeah, I guess that would be a way of looking at it. it it's like a soft AOE, yeah. Um, and and I mean that's what the dagger has. It has a line oh, of right, AOE. Yeah. So it's 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 similar. It's a more forgiving it's, it's, form of the same idea, but yeah. One thing I, we can't do, which is we can't really do, which is a bit disappointing to me, is we can't have. There's a lot of a lot of MOBA games have, uh, like line splash, like like they have yeah, a lot that of was star, on which Starcraft do, originally. With lurkers, yeah. Well, I mean, there's 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 lots of games that have have that sort of thing. They can have like shaped AOEs that face different directions yeah. and come in different shapes and things. Which uh, it's a bit of shame that we only have circular AOE or um, burn through um, piercing shots. Anyway, game starting. Game is starting. Yeah. So welcome back. If you were not paying attention, welcome back. If you're not paying attention to the discussion on the on the various merits of the Hovercraft factory and all of its units. Because apparently some people don't understand, like me, but now I do, how Hovercraft units, especially Halberds, are useful, but they are, and if you weren't paying attention to that, well then, oh well. Anyway, we're gonna be <laughs> going on to game three of Skazi Oxides versus Lipstip and Lowry, because, and I say oh well, because that means that 
I guess I will have an easy time playing Hovercraft versus whoever it wasn't paying attention than those who were. I, th I think that um, the map they've chosen here is the largest, macroiest, hugest map they could find. Really? They weren't looking very hard. Because there well, was a map that we had... Called Epic. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Epic. No, no, no. There's another map that was <laughs> this massive reclaim. I was thinking of the one, one tournament. Google Frog and Randy were playing on it. and yeah. or Maybe the last TBT tournament. And it was... I don't remember the name of it. White Rabbit, I think? Yeah, White Rabbit. That's what it was. That's a weird map. It's not just an eco map. That's a reclaim map. That's what I mean. Though. So it's so it's even more it's really macro y in a way. And has it, it's actually it actually has like different mechanics. It's kind of oh okay, I guess odd mechanics. But yeah, this is a very macro y map though, and it's 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 not even flat. So it's has all these choke points and things. Oh. I can expect a, we can expect a long game from the final bronze match. <laughs> I, I expect air here. I think if they don't go air, they're committing suicide. And Given the size of the map, yeah. Air <laughs> is so strong now. Yeah. Okay, so Lowry's going for Cloakies. And Jump Bots are Yogstoth's choice. Well, Skazi goes for Light Vehicles. And Flipstep hasn't chosen yet. I think no, you, yeah. both of them could go air. And wants to go Shields. <laughs> yeah, this is a really hilly map, too. And cliffy map. I don't know. Seems like the sort of thing that could... Definitely be a problem for bot and vehicle heavy play. Like the choke ones back here? Yeah, I don't know. I don't see that. They could just fly a constructor to the other hitbox, uh, start box. Need and build a second base there. Shields. Shields and the for flips, dip, and, Law and Lowry, and then. Come on. Then jump jet and light vehicle for Yogs and Skazi. No planes. No planes. I, I, don't, I don't know why they choose a giant. You'd expect with a giant macro map like this, they were choosing it, expecting to go planes or someone. I don't know. Yeah. Well, not going air is suicidal. Jeez. Except that the other at least, but this will give an even longer game. <laughs> uh, Maybe they're expecting to switch into air later on because they're going to be yeah, playing. Of course. Possibly. They're going to be playing a big macro game, so air later on. Well, prepare for Dot Wars, people. <laughs> no, not really. I'm going to try to stay as close as possible. We'll get the regular graphics in there. I'll do the dots. I'll do the dots. Yeah. <coughs> so, Lowry is... Wow, he's pushing it fairly defensively. Flipstep, on the other hand, much more open in their posture. So, I'm guessing... So, Lowry is going to be pretty open in the north side, which actually is going to be taking advantage of Skazi. Although... Guys, you won't be able to do much with it. The dark getting stopped. Darts over to the south. Not sure where Flipstep is set up. And Flipstep and Lowry have not yet met up with Skazi and Yogstoth, so... This is one advantage of the light vehicle that still gives the good scouting. And Skazi has a massive information advantage now. Yeah, determining this early, what both the factories are... I mean, if one of them's air, it lets you not build AA. But they're coming in with, um... Their own raiders. Both, they've shown they're both their factories anyway, so... Yeah. There's not much of an advantage to that. No, I think Yogstoth really should have stayed back on that one just to give a bit of a mind game on it, but I don't know if they would have really thought about that. I think I think rushing out an early pyro, though, if you're doing that, sending it straight to the enemy base is not such a bad idea. It, it, as long as you avoid the enemy commander it, and can, you can jump away from LOTs. If you're, trying to, if you're not trying to do a fake out, which I guess isn't really something uh, that's developed enough to... Think. I don't know. Given the meta, that was that. that weird he, now. he got Fire easily surrounded didn't by didn't work those. out. Yeah. Nope. He got surrounded by those glaives, which was he, he shouldn't have let himself be surrounded like that. And he got in within, within range of the commander. He should have been paying more attention. If you're going to do an attack like that, you need to set up Flip your base, set up your eco, really let it run, and then just watch your pyro until it dies. Mm hmm. So you want two constructors for Joxetov, one constructor for Skazi. Um, Lori has one going, and Flip doesn't have any. Wow, no, Flip so still has two. paused the factory. But they're not doing no, anything. No, 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 Flip has one. Where are they then? Flip has a contract oh, wait, right next to the factory. It's a very yes, dark color. Wait, I didn't see him. Can I change the colors in-game? I think you can turn off simple team colors, but I don't think you can really change the colors in-game other than changing the colors config and then throwing it to or your Maybe it reloads. <laughs> it's, it's a little weird. Yeah, now everything has a different color. Cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, so 
Hopefully this isn't a problem for people in the stream, by the way. If it is, let me know. I can't really do anything about it immediately, but... I guess let me know anyway. And... I mean, I did modify the red color because the people were complaining about it, so... Definitely, and actually... Is this the red color well. which is... Which is pale? Yeah. Pale red the, sort of thing? This is the lighter it's red, new, yeah. So it compresses better, or seems to compress better, and also it's just easier to read. Lori made a Zeus. Lori made a Zeus already? Wow. This is a big map. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to do with it. I think if you would have made two constructors instead, and then a Zeus, <laughs> would have been a better... Uh... It would be, except for the fact that Zeus are... At this stage in the game, with all the raiders popping around? I mean, this is still heavy in the raider stage, and given the size of the map, it's going to be in the raider stage for a while. I don't know what the... You just run away from the Zeus with any unit you have, and it will arrive somewhere next Christmas, and then you have turrets up. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's I don't unless there was a gunship in here, but there's no gunship plant, so I don't really understand the rationale behind this. I'm missing something. I also see an outlaw. I think I think it's because of the pyros. He's seen the pyros. He thinks the enemy's oh, going right, to keep throwing pyros. Yeah. He's like, I can deal with pyros with the Zeus. It's easy. Except that and you, can right. you cannot that. deal with happen. pyros with the Zeus. <laughs> Pyro just jumps this means away. You can he can either use it defensively, or he can just walk at the enemy, and as long as the enemy keeps using pyros... I guess, but... Um, the thing is, it's not easy for vehicles because of the big lake there. It's not e actually easy for vehicles to get around to the north. No, it's too So he can hilly. probably... Yeah, he can probably use the Zeus offensively, sort of march it in. Although... Took pyros out quite easily. One thing I'm surprised I see this, at is... Did you see this game with the shield, the convict, and the dart? How Skazi continuously tried to get underneath the shield, and... No. Flips the cat walking away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the, on, on the snowy plateau on the left-hand side, there's a little dead convict, which... Yeah, if you can get under the shields, it's it's really good. But oh, right, yeah. That. But anyway, as I was saying, with the with the pyro, I found that, yeah, Zeus can work, although Warriors work surprisingly well, too. But Lotus... Like, one and a half Lotuses kills a pyro pretty reliably. And I admittedly... That's not something you necessarily want to do, but at the same time, Lowry is investing pretty heavily in static defense. That would be enough, or close to, other than a massive horde of pyros. Zeus is mobile, though, and it is useful throughout the game. If he meets an enemy comp push, I mean, he's almost halfway up the map. If the enemy's comp pushed to that point, the Zeus Skaz and Yotsudov are really running True. away income-wise. Tick coming in. Oh, Roach, I mean, if those scorches go any further... <laughs> Well, yeah, the south side and then the north side. Well, in the center, there's a roach, and there are. Yeah, some ticks along the north side as well, but. Oh, here it comes. I want to see them all dead. Boom! Oh, yeah, there <laughs> we go. Ah. Nice roach shot. Stopping the scorchers dead in tracks. <laughs> Gazi is like, oh, no, I cried. Honk. Flipstiff does the honking for him. Flipstiff honks Gazi's <laughs> nose. Wow, that's. I don't know. I think that might be a little much. I think that those might be fighting actions. Them fighting axe. But Flipstip. Wow. Doing quite well. Oh, sorry, Lowry doing quite well with the Scorchers there. That was. Well, push through, just cut through. Skazi's forces. Skazi's masons, no problem. Skazi's commanders cleaned up some raiders in the south, but there's more glaives coming through. Well, yeah. yeah. Like, eight glaives coming through on here. And no real defenses, actually. Yeah, there's. Okay. Yo, there this transition to Ravens. Ah, okay, there's the air switch. We have found it. And air switch as well from Lowry. They're taking responsibility for that particular part of the strategy. And Felon Ball starting up for Flipstep, but not particularly well grouped together. The thugs, I think they're trying to time together a meetup, get a meetup later on. It's not going to be punished. In the right north, now. we have pirates going in against glaives, and we have moderators as well. Moderators have beaten back the Zeus, so the Zeus actually retreated versus them. Uh -huh. mm. And the tick is, the bombers is aren't doing much. And the tick is yet. still out of range too, not in the right position to deal with this at all, which is rather unfortunate because that tick would have been really handy. But it wasn't on the north side here. It wasn't on the actual snow. I think it's the energy of Skazi and Yorks. That's just giving them uh, a lot of overdrive. Actually, the grids aren't that well connected. I don't know. One of the well, I see they have a lot more income. 70 versus... Well, true. 60 something. The snowy hills along the back, if you put wind on them, you get height advantage from it. And 
wind could be actually really strong here if you want to overdrive. He already has a bit of a wind farm up, whereas the left team is relying still yeah, entirely on solar panels. Yeah, because on the bottom it's wind minimum. It's 34, 31 against 69 and 49. It's and the top it's 0.6 is minimum on the plateaus. So that's not bad. Yeah, they are pretty cost effective. I mean, most of them is going to be much higher than 0.6, so definitely works out. And not, sometimes... Okay, Scott's doing a decent rating across the map, because at this point, really, Flipstam and Lowry have far more metal extractors than Scott's and Yogg stuff do. Not as much metal, but more extractors, the more map control. And I can totally see why Flipstam is trying to stop that, why Flipstam is trying to basically just deal with getting rid of as much as they can, because, well, they have an advantage, but Scott's and Yogg stuff... Actually, it's have the big advantage. scorch. Of, Why not? Oh, it is a completely oblivious to those scorches. Yeah. Oh yeah, over to the southwest, yeah. just to get rid of that convict, which will be. Gonna be no, he's going to hide the convict in the hills, which is really clever. But there's a bunch of conjurers coming in, which is going to bundle right into them. Flipstip does this brilliant job of hiding his single constructor while Laurie's just like, blue, blue. I got five conjurers. <laughs> he's going to walk straight in, and conjurers are cloaked. They're not the sneaky ones. Oh, here goes the commander. No! Wow! Wow! Uh, he bombed the oh, AA, yes. why not? He bombed the Razor's Kiss. Oh! And now he's fighting against enemy fighters and he's revealed his air, so... Here comes and, another yeah, the enemy fighters are going to take it out. I mean, I think... Are any of these going to survive? Oh yeah, that's something going to survive. No, he's he's retreating. The They've escaped... Three of them have escaped into friendly territory, but... At the same time, mass invasion coming along the center line, and... Spearheaded by Thuglaw, but Thuglaw fell in, but second fell in a bit behind. Fell in, trailing it behind. Needs yeah. to regroup that one first just to have that extra firepower. And is doing that right now, so definitely got that on the ball. Oh, but at the same time, boy, 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 do you have disarm, which only one felon survived. So you know what, maybe... I gotta say, that was actually the right call for Flipstep in the first place. That separation did give the second felon a bit of a chance. It just drained their shields though, so... They're going to have to recharge before they can come back in again. But that's enough to buy a lot of time. Those Scourges are still alive. Yeah, but so is the remor so is the former Shield Ball. It would have died if that last Felon was disarmed as well. Mm. And over the north... Wow, I think okay. These... How many powers is this right now? That... Oh, whoops. It's not enough. No, <laughs> it's not enough. Many yeah, it's how many first, but it has really gone down. Not work out, unfortunately, for Yogg'Sathoth. I mean, there are more pyros that came from. There's actually about there's 12 pyros on the map overall, most of which are inside of Yogg'Sath's base. Or yeah, most of them are on the north side of Yogg'Sath's base, and along with them some swifts, but not much else. I mean, okay, ravens as well, but the ravens have uh -huh. gone back home. Oh wait a second. Oh, uh, there's there's a there's a thunderbird which just stunned uh, Yogg's commander in the north, and it's being taken out by glaives now. an excellent attack. Very well coordinated. They're Laurie really having his... Uh, so much aircraft by Yoke. Yeah, that's kind of becoming hard to track, actually. A map this big, yeah. No, I meant just the air. In the north, he's got a bunch more pirates coming fights. And he's got a constructor, which will hopefully reclaim the comp commander, and it's setting up more defenses, but he Here needs Here comes AA. another round of uh, pyros. Yeah, over the north side, we have 11 pyros coming in. And they're going to be... He needs to... He, he's, he's point moving them. Like, at this stage, you shouldn't even be point moving them. You should already be line moving them and have them prepared to prevent them from getting ticked, to prevent them from shooting. You can have a, see, see the ticks putting itself in position mm -hmm. along the north. And... I don't know why people point move to begin with, actually. I've gotten so used to line moving that I just don't understand why point moves even come up. It's alright with shield bots sometimes. Oh, yeah, right. Shield bots would do it. But, I mean, at any other factory. Shield bots oh, are exception, boy. really. Yeah, with them still having to expand, we expanded to the south since the Scorchers took out their attempt to do that. And with um, Yog, Yog's um, pyros really ripping up the north, this looks bad. Yeah, it really does. But the shield ball's been completely wiped out by a huge Scorcher push through the middle, so... Mm, they don't even have an army advantage anymore. Yeah, at this point I think that... They've never had. Yeah, they just well, had well, pressure, but... Scotty 
Skazi has 11k uh. army alone. I mean, Skazi has more, almost, well, not quite more than double, but still a massive army and basically just pushing in. I think this is going to kill it. I don't know, maybe there's comeback potential, but just the ravens can tear everything apart. The uh, they can just lose everything and they'll build it up yeah. again. They have uh, too much income. Yeah, they already they have all their nexus claims. They're already overdriving while Lorien flips to not overdriving. They're already they're, they're struggling just to take their nexus. Yeah, they have a they're, they're, power, they have, which is they've nice been thing. rebuilding all the time and not reclaiming that. Uh, and not building power and it's just yeah, that's really not working out. Which is un which is a little bit unfortunate. I mean, we had two several two one well even games and this one's. I guess really shown that Scott and Yoxeth know how to play a map this size because that's... They chose this they map. They chose this map, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, because they lost the last I think they game. know what they're doing. Laurie, I know, is a one versus one player, but Laurie and Flipstip, they're more... Are they specialists in one versus one, sort of? Wait, are you asking? Maybe they're not used to maps this large. They might be. I'm really not sure. Often. I would expect Laurie to be. He, he, he would play large maps. He's, he's, he likes flat maps. He likes tanks and hovers. Yeah, but at the same time, how often? That's the thing. How often at what level? They didn't focus on uh, expanding enough in the early game. They actually did something, I think, which is... But they started like, right next to each other, which I just don't think was that great an idea. I think Skazi and Yogg actually also started next to each other, I think, for safety against a rush, which mm -hmm. is, you know, sound. But they started towards the middle of the map. While Laurie and Flipstip have had trouble taking the south of the because map the entire so far game, to the north, they can't project they any real pressure north, down there. Right the middle, exactly. There's a presence, and that's and a yeah. Ball. The first constructors run into uh, dart a dart or dart, uh, which stopped that route of uh, expansion for quite a long time. Yeah, they kept raiding through there. The um uh, yeah. Laurie and Flipstep just kept raiding, they sent raid after raid after raid. They really pressured it and made sure that it couldn't be taken. And it's really given them mm. a huge well, it, it could have been taken, but um, they didn't uh, defend their expansion or their constructors. Yeah, you, you, you need to send... If you, I mean, you, you try it once naked and then you don't try it again... <laughs> fr frankly, they should expand with the commanders along that direction um, if they're not example, going to. Yeah. And, they, and they did, I mean, Flipstep did, but he rushed for this hill which now has the geothermal power plant and the chainsaw on it, rather than just leapfrogging LRTs, securing the choke points. Because I mean, he's fighting against um, he's fighting against vehicles in the south, so it's actually very easy to secure the choke points on this map, uh, especially in the south. You, you can do it with two LLTs worth of you know coverage. Um, you can secure a lot of the entrances to the south. Uh, three if you want to secure the middle entrance uh, uh, along the left side as well. So, yeah, I, th I think they sort of dropped the ball on this one. I mean, it, Flipstip's commander could have rushed for that hill as well, and again, just mm. put, some, put some defenses in the choke points, and then expanded behind it with the constructors and been, been safe, but... But instead... I, I think he's well, sort of actually... on a monocle about the geo. Oh, the, the hill in the north, you mean? The hill on the south, this is um, Flipstip's commander. Oh! Oh, I see, yeah, because that is... He took this geothermal power plant, the chainsaw, and it's like... But he didn't take any of the nexus behind it, so they weren't secure. Hmm. He should have secured them. And well, Loud is taking them instead, so it's not sort of on this side. I mean, the map control is really even. It's just that the army difference is so huge because, well, I'm actually not entirely sure. Yeah, they finally managed to secure the the southern maxes, but now um they're losing again. The maxes, so. Hmm. Well, as long as I suppose they can keep their army advantage up. Even trading unfavorably mm -hmm. isn't too bad, as you mentioned before, so at least they're going to have a decent chance when it comes to trying to deal with this. But... Um, I think that... Um, they are actually having a lot of units come into their own territory. Um, there's a lot of reclaim in the north right now, where the, the, the jump bots have been fighting against the, um, against the shield bots. There's like there's like five k reclaim in that in the la that larger area. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's being reclaimed. It's being claimed right now by the stinger. The stinger going up there. They can probably kill it with the um, shield bot with a felon thug ball if it's paying attention. He moves in now, but it looks like he's just taking free damage right now. Indeed. 
He's, he's he clearly focused on something else. Probably on macro. Yes, right. Uh, shit, I'm falling asleep. Anyway, I need to get something to eat after this, just to get my energy back up, because I'm getting dehydrated and starving. Sorry about that, people who are watching the stream. I am... <laughs> A human. Yeah, I am unfortunately a human. <laughs> I've been working on this my whole life. It has not changed or gotten any better. I Well, that's the dream, isn't it? I seem to be stuck. Upload ourselves into robots. I don't know. Well, okay. Actually, <laughs> you know what this game is about. Actually, it's like sort of true, yes, machines, although right? more what this game is about is being able to build just a ton of everything using nanobots. And that'd be more the thing that I'd want. Like... Build yeah, every, build all robots, the things. <laughs> That's what I want. We have a pack of pyros running into a a felon thug ball, which is just not going to be effective. No, but, thanks um, to I, they're just, not using. I'm pretty sure Scout is aware that fire no longer penetrates shields. Yeah, they're not using their army very effectively right now. Um, but if they can focus on wyverns and rapiers, I think they're going to be all right. Rapiers in particular. Well, they aren't even building women's, are they? They hit everything. They hit air. No, there's a focus um, so on sumo. If you, I mean, right now Yogg's focusing on sumo, sumo's a bit and slow. it's slow. It's probably going to get there in time. That's sort of the problem. And yeah, entire. Okay, but never mind. Is there a crow coming in here? No, rapiers. Yes. So the rapier, rapier balls. They're really hard to beat. They can uh, hit everything. They're good against air. They're good against enemy fighters. If you can get an overwhelming ball of them. Okay, well, uh, at this point, they can hit I don't know if it matters. Raiders. I mean, Skazi and Yogstoth have taken two-thirds of the map so, thus far, and I don't see what, honestly, they can do to screw themselves up. I mean... But did you see how, you see how Flipstip has three Felon Balls running around? Or actually four of them? That's true. There's one in the north and a couple closer south. Uh, the one in the center isn't that big, but... Uh... The one in the far north is actually... I think it's the biggest, actually. I think if he ever does get through with his um, felon balls, and again he has a felon ball here taking sh shots from a, from a, a stinger, ball. which is you know just draining it. But the um, thing is, if he ever does get through, this will happen. What happened right now to this this ball in the north is that it will just get hit by a um, and he loses a thunderbird. Mm -hmm. And then from there we have the rapiers come in because the shields are down because that's how his armor. It is the wyvern. There we go. <laughs> ah, okay, so the wyvern was planes are the perfect counter to a. A felon ball which doesn't have an aspis in it, particularly with um, Thunderbirds and a Wyvern. Uh, and they're like the late game because units in the plane factory. Wyverns don't die, right? That's the big thing? That's the big thing, but they also do enough damage in Splash that a highly focused felon ball will, once its shields are down, particularly, in fact, even if its shields are still up, if it doesn't have an aspis, which, which it didn't. Um, the, the Wyvern will just one shot the entire ball and make huge amounts of cost mm -hmm. in a single run. Like this. Oh yeah, that was... Ah. That was a good shot, and still that shield ball's not dead yet, but yeah, that's... Getting pretty close. Getting very close, actually. I mean, I think that... Oh, dom Dominatrix on the thug, because why not? <laughs> Drain out the shield. They're actually not bad against the shield ball dominatrix. No, they're, they, they are not. They're actually pretty yeah. good. They're pretty annoying. One of the when you're they using they, the they actually ball. drain the enemy shields as well. Yeah. If, you know, because you get a unit inside the shield ball and the felon just shoots at a thug, which is one of the, you know, tankiest units in the game. And then it just drains the shields as it's doing that. So it's just. Mm. Forget you guys. And then, of course, the rapier ball is just coming again. The last. I think it's the last felon ball, actually. That was the first one we down. And a little one to the south. Yeah, and there's one. Oh, which isn't even a ball anymore. A new one being formed yeah. over to the northwest. But that's about it. But at this point, I think Skazi and Yogg's are just going to move in. I mean, they're, just, they're not even too worried. They're just sort of moving in. And at this point, Skazi... Yeah, they've won an economy at this point, but it's it depends on how long they're going to take to win the game. Yeah, they can just is, push. Um, I mean, they have... Is there efficient unit trades? They are that's efficient unit really trades, but they also have like, three times the amount of units in metal. Yeah, definitely. And, and they're, they're doing things like... Actually... And they have 33 rapiers. This, this, this geo in the south, this huge geo, if he can get in there and kill it, he's not going to be able to, but if he could get in there and kill it, that would be pretty spectacular. Well, even it then... It would take out the entire rapier. Okay, but that's still 217 energy. That's the thing, is they have a lot of energy at their disposal. 
a whole wave of all go. That would be spectacular. It's it's a shame that it was never going to happen. But wait, why would it all go? It's not that close. I mean, where's, where's well, I, it, there was enough of it there that yeah, he would lose the majority of his rapiers to the to the exploding. It's a moho geo. So oh, does it explode like a single? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I guess he might lose the fusion. You, you don't play? Do you play many team games? You nope. No. Yeah, they explode. I play like some single teams occasionally, but I don't play anything bigger than that. Good man. Um, I team games. Are... What? <laughs> yeah, I've. They're, they're fun. The get my game is excellent, and team games are fun and valid way to play the game. And I just prefer everyone. playing one on one because I enjoy in a competitive it's, environment it's being bad. reliant on myself and myself alone. Yeah, it's, it's my personal <laughs> preference. The, That's all. Two, two versus two and, and, and stuff. It's actually, I mean, up to four versus four is actually really fun. Oh yeah, no, I, if I, I, I agree. With people of a similar skill, but, but I just didn't want to play. I mean, versus eight. That's what I'm talking about. I don't play never eight versus four. eight. I don't play anything. I don't really even play three v three, four v four. I look for one v ones. I'll play two v two occasionally, but I and I cast two v two because it's it's fine and. Interesting, provides an interesting insight. I mean, we see things like Moho Geo from time to time. And yeah, down see, goes, you... well, well, close to commander. Which yeah, that's a lot of rapiers. That is, yeah. in fact, 42 rapiers. And growing quickly. Oh. And pylons go down as well. I mean, overdrive is just, what? Well, cut off what overdrive was even being potentially transmitted, which wasn't much. Yeah, at this point, this is kind of doing it in. I mean, the heavy tank factor isn't even. He's retreating from the chain, so I don't think he needs to. Well, at this point, why not? There's a ton of vandals, though. Oh, right, yeah. He's just spamming nothing but vandals. But honestly, it doesn't even matter. I mean, there's what, four or five sumos coming in out. Yeah, over the four north side, there's three sumos in here. I think a fourth in production. No, just three. Never mind. Just the three. And everything being used to build swifts. That extra anti air, air based anti air. And really, these sumos just walk. Yeah, they can't quite waltz in yet. There's a, there's a conga line of rapiers going to the <laughs> Yep. Gang, not even knocked down by the. It's how many defense. Not knocked down. Chicken the game. They, they actually don't have a hot, huge amount of damage, so he shouldn't be focusing the fusion reactors here. He should take out the AA first. Yeah, or well, get a caretaker or get rid of. The metal they're attackers. getting bombed. <laughs> the ravens are actually bombing the rapiers out. Well. Yeah. It's not gonna matter though, because down goes. Oh, he did get a fusion. Oh, not quite. Whee. Oh, fusions don't change. Well, that cuts about uh, how much is it? Seven k out of his army. Yeah, but that was not worth it. That still doesn't help. He did get the fusion and all like met metal extractors. But now the um, sumos are pushing the base. Yeah, out. as are all the pyros, and that fusion is very nearly dead. Which would I thought honestly that would explode everything else. I really expected a chain explosion. Oh well, it kind of makes sense he wouldn't have it, but still, I am disappointed. And the sumo's still not moving in, very, being very conservative. And why not? Oh, that's why. In econ mode. Yeah, the sumo's. Yeah. Why are they not Maybe pushing in? What the heck? Oh, and some dominatrices because why not? Lots of dominatrices <laughs> because. Wait, is that? Oh yeah, dominatrices on dirtbag as well, because that's what happens. <laughs> Lots and lots of dirtbag and some thug too, because dirtbag thug, that's the new meta. That's always been. Oh, I was actually joking. <laughs> Wait, yeah, you're right. It is. <laughs> I meant at the same time. You look at I mean, team games, people a just ball of dirtbags and thugs at the same time. Thug bag. Yeah. That's that's not really a thing. Bag of thugs. <laughs> He's sending the dirtbags back at them. Oh, I guess people responded to my thing about building stuff with nanobots, but it helps if I can build myself a way to avoid having to use sleep to recuperate. <laughs> anyway. Here comes some glaives through the south. I think they're going to go for the geothermal power plant. It might work. Well, it's a, it's on the way to becoming a moho, or it was. I think I cancelled. No, no, there's some... Uh... Flip the lorry has has glaives running through the south, but they're dying to a laser tower. Yeah. Oh, I see. Sorry. Uh, Skazi's noticed them because so. Lowry's geo was starting to morph to a moho, but yeah, it wasn't really happening. And the dominatrices aren't really going to allow that. And if they allow it, then the levelers won't. 
yeah, nothing's really going to let that in. However, Hawk's trying to get rid of the rapiers, so at least that's something, but even then, those rapiers really don't have much to work from. Sumo's coming in, and this... Gonna just jump on the stinger, tear it apart, probably jump on the geothermal power plant, tear it apart. Doesn't even need to. I can just walk, keep walking and shoot it. Oh yeah, it. you're right, wow. Yeah, forget that then, I guess. I'm gonna jump on these Zeus. No, not even. Doesn't even have to. Yeah, he could jump on the he could jump on the Zeus. He probably needs to. Oh, no, it doesn't really need to. Oh well, I know with three, I suppose he doesn't need to. No, three just <laughs> he, sh he should jump on the conjurers just because there'd be lots of pretty fireworks. And it'd be faster too. It'd prevent reclaim. It's actually really important. Some glaives there. actually managed to get into the base of um. Oh wow, they did. Skazi. And nailing that factory too. Although admittedly the reapers would stop it, but still. And they're not gonna do much. And Sumo's getting rid of that chainsaw, which should... Oh, come on, get rid of the chainsaw, because if you get rid of the chainsaw, then all the rapiers can move freely. And proxy chainsaw as well, just to stop those hawks moving around. That's kind of surprising. And another conga line of rapiers, all 42 of them once again. And dealing with the hawks, because, well, yeah, they would. There's 42 of them and four hawks. The victor is pretty obvious. I mean, if it was a phoenix and they were bombing all those that line of units in the air, then maybe it wouldn't be so obvious. Nope. It's hawks. They don't have splash. Oh, he jumps yeah. his own sumos on top of each other. You can you use, use uh, custom okay. formations with uh, jumps, on, by the way. Wait, why do you use why do you use jump on himself? What the heck? Yeah, he, he just clicked one spot. Oh, I see. So he can repair with all these constructors. Wait, what? Why would that be relevant? Well, jump is, is useful for a treat, so you can repair it, but... Um, right, to get out yeah, of there. It's not just... Yeah. It's weird that they would have... Must have been a mistake. Anyway. No, no, he's it's, it's just retreating so he doesn't lose them. He's trying to, you know, trade efficiently, even oh, though whoa, he has three the? times the heat. Ah, I missed the fusion explosion. You really got a factory explosion, too. It looks like, at this point... Rapier's trying he's to... Not using he's not using these. Job, not working out. He's really not using the rapiers well, because rapiers, their major advantage is their slow damage. So if you hit AA with them, you cut the AA's DPS in half. So you can take out the AA with the rapiers, sniper, um, and then kill the eco. But their upfront DPS is not that great. So he's, he's trying to use them as sniping units, which you're going to do that. You might as well use um, Banshees, because they're faster and they have more DPS. Yeah. Or at this point, a crow. As much but, as yeah. I love rapiers. Well, at this point... No, still more rapiers coming in, so another wave of rapiers. 33 rapiers. Yogsoth is being incredibly pow incredibly cowardly with his, his sumos. He's using this, you know, you've got this cluster of four rogues or so in the north fighting the sumos, and he's using the jump attack to jump away from the rogues so he can get back and repair. Yes. Like, oh, well, whatever. It looks like the they're going to stop on. doing anything anyways. Guys, he's coming in with the rapiers. Put a stop to that. Yeah. And, well, everything, really. Oh, the sharpshooter's gone revealed itself slightly. Well, not revealed itself. It revealed that it existed, but I think it was already known. And... Yeah, free nuke silos. That will teach him. What? Oh. Hey, he's almost done, too. One of them's actually almost completed. 74%. Yeah, it's been on for a while. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't even notice that. But actually, I can't believe I didn't even notice that. Because there's a singularity reactor over here, too. Because why not? Really, why not? Actually, starting to overdrive rather inefficiently. I might need some pylons here, like right here, put a pylon in. Otherwise, it's not worth it. And also here, rebuild some pylons. I think they have enough economy at this point. Hmm? Well, okay, I suppose they have enough economy. I don't know, there's never such thing as enough economy. You can always build units faster. <laughs> Especially super expensive units enough like economy to win. For the purpose of winning. I think the object of the game is to win. You know, I have thought so too. To but that was five yeah. minutes ago, and <laughs> in the intervening time, I've come to the conclusion that the point of the game is actually to make the numbers go as high as possible. Because, honestly, I can't think of any other explanation for what's going on right now. I can't believe it. I think they're showing off the stream. Like, they're building nuke silos, and they're probably going to do, like, a multi-nuke thing where he nukes, like, three different spots at once to, like, finish the game I mean, in some spectacular fashion. I would fashion. normally appreciate that if it's a replay and I can fast-forward through the boring parts. <laughs> But I can't, because <laughs> yeah, this isn't the sort of game where exactly. I can fast forward through the boring parts. And if they're actually going to wait for... Uh, you can still fast forward, but they won't... And track we still it. have the finals to go. We do, but I'm going to be getting something to eat beforehand. 
Yep. So, I mean, that's okay. We can commentate on, on the interesting strategies that, are, that that arise from building nuke silos and capturing rogues using <laughs> using dominatrices. Yes. And here's... It's called... Here's the late game... Sorry? Sorry. This game, it's, it's called teabagging. <laughs> or the RTS equivalent <laughs> thereof. <laughs> Yeah, we can see units you don't usually see. This is a combo in the north that I'm a real fan of, which is... In my shadow fury like must be... Hit. No, 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 look at the northeast corner of the map, because you guys have labels on. I just noticed it in chat. I must be hating you. <laughs> shadow fury, I three, won't three, hate three, you, Yogstock, if you just fire this one missile and then win. <laughs> I don't think you're actually watching the stream, but if you are, just fire this one <laughs> missile... <laughs> And then I guess you'd be disqualified because you're actually stream and that's cheating, so... Hmm. Crap. I, I think... I hope he's not going to wait to stockpile all three. I... I think they are. I... I <laughs> think they are. Do you want to get time to eat? You know what? And, and, I think I will and... because it's going to be five minutes. So, you know Yeah, what? me and Flores, it's, you know, you we can talk it. about it. I'll just kind of go into yeah, a bit of an yeah, overview. We can talk about silly stuff, drink some beer. I'll go into a bit of a dot board <laughs> overview so you guys can just deal with that. And I'll just get yep. something to eat and maybe do some jumping jacks, you know, keep myself awake. Yeah. And if the game ends sooner, <laughs> then like... maybe it ends sooner. But I don't think it's going to end sooner. Unless unless Lowry and Flipster just leave. I don't know. Yeah, I think that... um. In the north, they have the Sumo Firewalker combination, which is like when we sort of designed this. Um, my thought was that this would be the late game combo of the Jump Factory, in that you have mm. the Firewalker, which is it does AOE. It's actually really good against raiders, um, and it's really good against uh, defenses and all those sorts of things. So it should be able to um, sort of create these like inferno zones that the Sumo, which it can be sort of vulnerable to surround, being surrounded sometimes, or at least that's the idea. It can sort of just walk through the flames, and of course it has the hit points and stuff that it can just mm -hmm. shrug, shrug the flames off. That this is sort of their late game ultra combo, but you don't really see firewalkers used other than like in really small choky maps as pure artillery units when they're really actually really good riots in as long as you have defenses. There's 1200 metal, else. That, right? So there's a yeah. lot Yeah, and they, they don't have very much hit points. I mean, it's two bombers. Or one sniper. Or one sniper. At least yeah. it used to be uh, one sniper. Um, damage. Yeah, no, it's still one sniper. Yeah. So they are they are sort of vulnerable, but there's not there's not that many um artillery units in the game which can project that kind of AOE. Like you have the napalm missiles, and you have um sort of some AOE from tremors and things like that. But uh, although the notion sort of is that artillery should have AOE, because that's what artillery, you know, there's sort yeah, of that's what it's aesthetic called. conception of artillery that has AOE, but if artillery's purpose is to kill static defenses, then, and then the AOE's purpose is to kill raiders, then making artillery good against raiders, which if anything should counter anything, it's raiders should counter artillery. So most artillery doesn't have AOE. No, we didn't oh, get no! the <laughs> They resigned. That's what you get. That's what you get for grandstanding. Yeah. Yeah, it's their own <laughs> fault, really, for grandstanding like that. One nuke in the middle of their base would have caused them to resign and end the game anyway. They don't need three nukes for you know <laughs> oh, for the stream, what have you, to be extra epic with the stream. It's like, yeah, Thing. don't grandstand. Just one nuke is enough. Oh, one nuke is always they, enough. They finished. Yeah, they they quit. Oh, okay. Before the nuke, before they launched the nuke, it, it, the second one was on four percent, and and they. He should have just launched the the, the nuke and had his had, had his giggles. See, I, that's what I was saying, but I'm, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I guess we'll be moving on to the finals. Thank you guys for covering for me. Well, I got something to eat and walked around a bit, so I wasn't completely dead. And that is going to be bronze match. So we're moving to finals, which will be Magman Cube versus Google Frog Aquanim. That'll be up in a few minutes, though. So we'll be up when that's up. And for now. Listen to some calming, possibly, music from Danny Schneidmesser, who's vaguely related to the game by way of composing. <laughs>